was just a dust man. God had put arms on him, dude, and he put legs on him. God had put man parts on him. Am I talking to anybody? Uh, gave him a mind and a brain and eyes and lungs and toes and fingers. In his image. Not in her image, but in his image. I heard somebody say the other day that we ain't got to say Father God. We can say Mother God. You need to wash your mouth out with soap. I want to tell you, God ain't a woman. He's in the masculine sense. It's God the Father and ain't God the Mama. It won't ever be and it ain't ever been. In fact, Jesus' Mama had to get saved through her own son just like uh, you and I. Can I get a witness from somebody? But anyhow, he, he made that dust man. And that dust man was standing there without life. Couldn't move, but he was made right now. And then God Almighty breathed the breath of life into that dust man, and man became a living soul. And at that point, there was no such thing as a woman. Had never been created. But God looked around and said, you know what? It ain't good that man should uh, be by himself right there. I, uh, I'll make him a helpmate. I wish somebody helped me right there. I'll make him a... He didn't say run down yonder to the doctor and get some hormone shots and, and get your beard plucked out. That, that don't make a woman. I'm telling you, you might be able to grow facial hair, but that don't make you a woman. They might shoot you full of testosterone, but uh, that don't make you a woman. A woman came because God put that man to sleep performed the first surgery ever in history, and it happened to be a transplant surgery. I might kill these doctor words, but I'm going to try. God was the surgeon. That one was easy. But he was the anesthesiologist. Did I say that right? That was close, wasn't it? Uh, he, uh, he was the nurse. He was the doctor. He was the healer. Uh, God was it all. And when he got through, he had made a man, and he had made a woman. Boy, the Bible would fix everything that's wrong with it. The book of Romans, the 10th chapter, we're going to go back and do a little bit of bits and pieces. Those of you that might remember bits and pieces is when we started in the book of Genesis taking something out of every book in the Bible, all 66, and looking at different things that the Lord had to say in Scripture. Now, some people tell you you cannot find Jesus in the Old Testament, but they're not reading the right book. Uh, he's everywhere. He, he, he was life, and he was right there in Genesis. He, he's the speaker, the one who hung the star. He's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. You can't have one without the other. One don't exist without the other. They are three, but yet they're one. You say, preacher, I don't understand that. Well, your mind ain't like God's mind, and we ain't supposed to understand things like God. You got us right here, and you got God. He's just out of sight. Uh, you ain't got to believe, uh, understand something to believe it. You just got to believe it, and you find him everywhere. He's the one that knocked the walls down in Joshua. Uh, he was the one burning in the bush, but yet the bush wasn't burn. In Exodus, he was the one that parted the Red Sea. Uh, he was there with Nehemiah when the wall was built. In Malachi, he's the one that changes not. Uh, in Micah, he's the plumb bob that were measured by. Everywhere in the Word, you find Jesus Christ. And in Romans 10, verses 13 through 17, I want to read you something. You might understand it, but if not, I'll try to explain it to you. Uh, Romans 10, verse 13. For whosoever you know we don't read fast at this church I, I like to do the word like I do my dinner I, I don't want not want to wolf it down I want to enjoy it he said for whosoever that tells
tells me that's anybody. The drug dealer, that's uh, whosoever. Uh, that one that is so far gone that everybody's gave up on him, uh, uh, yeah, that one too. Uh, yeah, uh, I like them that's got bad past. I, I like them mean folk that come in. Hello, somebody. Lord have mercy. We have to warm up here in a minute. I like them folks who that show up to church. They were nasty. They were mean. You had to watch them with one eye and turn around when you walk. They, they might cut you, might shoot you, might stab you, or might buy you a soda pop. Who knows? Depending on what kind of I like them that everybody else has gave up on. I like them that is so far in sin. And let me tell you something one evening. I was at a church and I heard a mama and a daughter talking about uh, their daddy and their husband. And they said, I want this church to pray uh, for my daddy. And I remember the men in that church saying, well, uh, I want to tell you he's too far gone. Uh, Lord, when I heard that, I had to say, uh, uh, what in the world are you telling that wife and you telling that daughter that their daddy, that their husband is too far gone? The Bible says whosoever will. And you can never get too down deep that God can't reach you. You can never be too lost that God can't save you. You can never be too dirty that God can't cleanse you. Don't tell me the power of the blood ain't stronger than the power of the devil. Whosoever will. But anyway, I stayed there about three months. In every service, that mama and daughter, and then another daughter came. Every service, pray for daddy. That wife would stand up, pray for my husband. But the problem was, everybody in that church knew who that man was. I don't know if anybody's going to like me to see me. Uh, uh, they knew that he was a neighborhood drunk. Now, they men just weak around here. Uh, they knew that uh, if you see a vehicle in the canal ditch down the road, there ain't no need to go down there, you know who it is. I doubt anybody had as many stolen cars. Some of y'all don't even know what I'm talking about. I doubt anybody, is anybody, I doubt anybody in the county had as many stolen cars that he had that a drunk happened to get and happened to wreck in the day while he was home sleeping. Mm. And I remember the officials in the church when mama and the daughter would leave, they'd get together in their group and say, you know, uh, you won't ever see that man come in this church. He's let it be known how he feels about the church. In fact, told us what we could do with the church. Oh, boy, all that dude just make me excited. Yeah? What else did he say? Well, he tell you how you ain't got to worry about him surrendering to anybody called Jesus. Don't want nothing to do nothing. Uh, you can take that Jesus. To, uh, uh, Lord have mercy. He sounds just perfect. Uh, perfect for what, preacher? He sounds perfect to put his name on the altar and pray for him that God Almighty uh, get in his mind, get in his heart, get in his soul. But pray that he can't sit down and watch TV without the Lord speaking to his heart and soul. Three months later, I was standing at the pulpit, had an altar just like this. And I walked down the front of the altar, just like I am right now, and I turned my back to the congregation, saying something back here. I don't even know where I was looking. But I heard a dead silence in the church. I'm telling you, you could have heard a pin drop. I watched the lead musician stop in middle strum of the guitar. And I looked at him and his mouth dropped open. I'm telling you the truth, I was there. I ain't got to ask nobody. And I watched his mouth 
drop up and I could see him looking over my shoulder. And all I could hear was, look yonder. And you ever heard 40, 50, 100 people turn around in the chair at the same time? It sounds something like this. Boy, when they turned around and I turned around, guess who was standing at the back of the church in the middle of the aisle? It was that old nasty drunk. It was that fella that always getting his car stole every Friday night and every Saturday. It was that person that told the church where they could go and told the preacher what he could do with the church. It was that one that you didn't go visit him unless you took somebody. And uh, y'all don't understand what I'm saying. I have been to people's house and had the family meet me and say, please don't go to his house until we make sure that let me tell you something, I like to go to them kind of house and I turned around and I seen him in that aisle and the Holy Ghost broke loose in that church. Well, in about 10 minutes, I don't really think you'll stand it no more. Now, I'm getting ready to preach nasty. Would that be all right? Let me explain that to you. And folk tell me I need to clean stuff up, so I'd just rather preach it like it is. You ever had a feeling that something was coming? Well, somewhere in the preaching or singing or whatever was going on, I had turned my back to that church again. That man had made it over yonder beside his wife and beside his two daughters. And when I turned back around to walk back up that per I felt something. I had a sneaky feeling somebody was coming. When I turned over my right shoulder and looked, I seen a man about 6'4" in a mad dash coming down the middle. He was not walking, he was not jogging, but he was in a full run. All six, four, six, five of it, and he didn't have but about 20 feet to go. And when I looked, he had his eyes locked in on me. And buddy, when I turned out, all I had time to do was get my hands up, and when he caught me, yeah, I flipped over the altar, landed on the other side of the pulpit. His wife got up, and his daughters got up. And for 20 minutes, here's the dirty part now, I I laid on the carpet on the floor in that church while snot and tears dripped all over me because they piled on top of daddy while he gave his heart to the Lord. So I'm trying to tell you whosoever will. Whosoever. Lord have mercy. We better try to read that whole verse. Romans 10 and verse 13, uh, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall. I wonder, could I get a witness tonight that if you'll call out to God? I didn't study any of this. Now, I just got to go where the boat's going. Uh, if you ever been on the river when the current takes over, just let don't fight the boat, just ride with it. I tell you, I got a lot of them old friends that was hooked on something. Uh, hell, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, hello, somebody. I'm telling you, hooked on dope, hooked on stuff that you snort, uh, hook on stuff that you uh, breathe, scare, set, you catch it on fire, shoot it in your arm, shoot it in your toe. I don't know, you name it, they had it. I'm I telling you, what stuff, brown stuff, stuff you burnt, all kinds of mess. But I want to tell you, a lot of them now, uh, they in the church, uh, just as strong as they can be. And not the first one of them went to rehab, they went to Calvary. They got on their knees uh, and had the Lord get a hold of them. And they'll tell you, he took the hunger away, the desire away by the hand of God. Almighty. I've told you the story, but I'll tell you again. Worked with one about a 20 years ago. A man, pure genius with talent, could do anything he set his mind to do. But he loved the powder and he loved to smoke it and he loved to shoot it. 
When you're doing all three of them, you're in trouble, God. Lost his house. Lost his beautiful daughter. Lost his wife. Forget about the job. You can't work when that's going on. Boy, we'd be like fire ants from one job to the next, one job to the next, one job. You see, you can only stay until they drug test. I wish somebody would help me out. Uh, when you spend all day uh, working and you got uh, uh, rags burning around you so folk don't smell the marijuana while you smoking it, uh, you in bad shape. Uh, and I tell you, time went by and God would get a hold of me. And I went on my way and God just blessed my life. But I tell you, about 15 years went by when I met that boy again. And when I met him again, I hadn't said one word. He hadn't said one word. And we locked eyes and looked at each other and I instantly knew that God had saved his soul and forgave him of his sin and he walked up to me he threw his arms around me he said I want to know are you still preaching the gospel I said I am he said well I want you to know that God saved me and God forgave me and I'm going everywhere telling people what the Lord had done for me for whosoever will. <sighs> For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now we got to tighten this down a little bit. Y'all ride with me a little bit further. Uh, now how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? I want to be truthful to you. When I was growing up as a young boy, when I went to church and I was made to go, I knew that the preacher, he didn't care who I was. He didn't, evidently he didn't care who my daddy was and everybody else, he just didn't. But he would go up yonder and he would preach what came out of that holy book. And whether he would point that finger and I remember I'd sit on the side some night. So I was tired of him pointing his finger because everything he said, Corey, I was guilty of like somebody was telling on me. I, 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 I know who gave that man that info. I said, I know he's talking about, but I said over yonder, he'd still find me over yonder and point his finger. I go over yonder, he'd point his finger over. And later on, I realized his finger was uh, had GPS from the Holy Ghost on it. I want to tell you, when somebody must have been praying, and when God gets the pray, uh, people praying for somebody, you can run, but you can't hide. Uh, you can try to go, but you can't get away. The prayers of mama and the prayers of grandmama and the prayers of a godly daddy will track you down. I promise you when somebody's praying for you you might as well give it on up. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Oh Lord. A preacher should preach nothing but the gospel. That's right. That's right. I do not solicit people to come to this church. I invite folk to church. But find you a church that's got a man of God Amen. that is called by God Amen. that will preach to you right. the gospel. Amen. But you first got to know what the gospel is. I'm going to help you with that. From Genesis to Revelation right. is God's word. Men inspired by the Holy Ghost pinned down what thus saith the word of the Lord. The other night on one of them TV channels, you can't watch nothing on TV no more. That's why I watch lions and, and gales and rabbits and hippopotamus. I try to watch animals because everything else is full of trash. You, uh, you can't even watch a McDonald's commercial without a... 
or something. Lord have mercy, what's wrong with it? I don't need that mess to buy a cheeseburger. But I, would have, I was watching that scene on Gospel Channel. I said, well, this will be all right. There's about six preachers had a hot topic that night. Out of the book of Genesis, I said, well, I'll watch some of this. Y'all know what they was discussing that night? The flood. The worldwide flood. Y'all do know there was a flood way back yonder. Yeah. And they began to ask one another as they read it out the back. As they read it, brother, brother Mitchell, as they read it out the Bible, how can we explain this? How can we explain to folk that it's not really meaning what it's saying? It's impossible for the whole world to flood out at one time. Uh, it's impossible for somebody to get all them animals on a boat. I mean, how in the world is that old tortoise going to know if we got to go get on the boat? Hello, somebody. Uh, how's that gazelle going to know to leave the grass field and head on to the boat? It's time to go. So they spent about 30 minutes trying to figure out how to explain that the Bible didn't actually mean what it said. Well, my mind got to hurt. I quickly figured you got to be a genius if you're going to read the Bible like they read it. So I couldn't take no more of that, so I just started reading. And Lord, I hadn't read 10 words. I got to reading about the Big Bang and the stars blowing up and the moon colliding. I, I finally laid that mess down and got my Bible back out. And you all know what I found out? Well, I found out that long ago God was looking down from glory and he saw mankind and mankind was not doing things that he was pleased with. And he came down yonder and he pulled an old boy to the side whose name was Noah and he said, Noah, I want you to know I'm going to send the flood. I'm going to send the rain. I'm going to take care of man. In fact, here's the blueprint. Build a boat. A uh, big one. Drive it, drag it down there to the river. No, build it right there in the yard. Well, 10 years went by. And that crazy preacher was chopping wood and building a big boat. 40 years went by. And that crazy preacher, hello somebody, I told you Christians ain't God, I told you Christians is crazy. Y'all might not believe me. It ain't ever rained a drop on the face of the earth and there's a man out there in the middle of the desert building a boat so big you can't hardly see the end of it. And every time you walk by, he says, yeah, you better get on board, it's coming. Y'all don't hear me. Uh, uh, me and them two uh, wild fellas back in the day. Old Christian lady, I'd call her name, but I'll just keep it to myself. She was out there in her garden about 2 o'clock in the evening. 2 o'clock in the afternoon, it about 98 degrees. There was not a cloud in the sky. Hello, somebody. A bright, clear day. You'd sweat in the truck with the air conditioner. Here she was in her garden with that old straw hat on and a bucket of fertilizer. And I remember my buddy, one of them, he, 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 broke, he broke the numbers off 300 pounds. He was grown, rolled the window down in that truck, called her by name, respectful now. We, 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 didn't, we were respectful. Uh, called her name and said, I want to know what you're doing. Boy, well, she was a little feeble. She barely got turned around with that fertilized bucket. She said, boys, I'm fertilizing my garden. Well, the other fellow was a little smart eloquently. 
And he tried to explain to her that uh, your, your, your garden will burn up. Am I in a country church and now? Where am I? Uh, your garden to burn up when you throw the fertilizer out, yeah, and no rain come and the sun will scorch it. You just burn it all up. And she just sat there and listened to that stuff. And when that smart addict fella got through uh, trying to explain to her how garden and rain and fertilizer, well, and I just don't I didn't even say that. But anyhow, she just looked at him and said, uh, "Fellas, I want to tell y'all something." Uh, God uh, is the one that laid it on my heart uh, to get out here and fertilize my garden. And when I get through fertilizing my garden, he'll send rain on my garden. Well, have a good day. And but let me tell you something. In about 10 minutes, when she throwed out that last handful and when she got back to the front porch, Whoa! It turned a cloud over that garden. It didn't rain over there, but it rained right there. It didn't rain right there, but it rained in her garden. Y'all know where we got cantaloupes? Ah. Ah. Anybody in that community you want squash, we can tell you where to go. There's a garden. But they try to decide, is it really like God said it is? God, even over a hundred years later, still waiting on the rain that had never been. And these preachers was trying to decide, how do you explain that the book don't mean what it says. You better be careful who you listen to these days. And all you parents, you better be careful who you put your children under to lead them. Amen. That's right. These teenagers, they better have a preacher in their life that to tell them God made you like God made you and don't let anybody ever tell you different. You better have a preacher that'll look you in the eye and say, I don't care if you believe it. I'm going to read it to you like the Lord wrote it. If it says it happened, it happened. If it said it will happen, it will happen. What thus saith the Lord is true and final. Preacher, how them animals get on that? I don't know and I don't care. You need a better answer to that. Well, you won't get one from me. Uh, all I can tell you, with seven days to go, after about 100, 120 years, the Lord came back to Noah. Still not a drop of rain. And that big boat sitting right yonder in the front yard. And the Lord came by and said, Noah, you got seven days. And I'm going to send the rain. Well, I want to tell y'all something. Something strange started happening. <coughs> came one of them little field mouses. Yeah, y'all know what a field mouse is. Uh, here come a field mouse. He got uh, right through Noah's front yard. Uh, bypassed Noah and got up on that old boat ramp uh, and went up there on the boat. Well, wouldn't you know, here come one of them old fluffy tail bunny rabbits uh, hopping right through Noah's front yard. Didn't say a word to Mr. Noah, but he went and got on the boat. Uh, here come one of them deer. Uh, here came a squirrel. Here came a possum. Here came a raccoon. Hey, here came a hippopotamus. Here came everything that had feet and had fur and got on the boat. Now the turtle had to start a little earlier than the deer, but it still got there on time. And now when all the animals got on the boat, God 
shut the door. Now, there ain't but one way to preach that. It rained so much for 40 days and 40 nights, and the ground let go of the water, and everybody on the face of the earth except eight died. I don't need a college, a professor, a doctor or a lawyer to explain to me how can I prove it. I, I can prove it by reading in the book of Genesis. When he said he flooded the world, he did. When he said an axe head float, it did. When he said Peter walked on the water, he did. When he said a donkey spoke to a man, he did. When he said three Hebrew boys walked in the fire, they did. When he says there's a hell, there is. When he said he's coming back, he will. What thus saith the word of the Lord is so what supposed to be preached? The other day, the largest church in Memphis, the church didn't do it, the pastor did. Changed their rules on homosexuality. They called one of them famous country music singers. Said they needed to change the law in the church. Didn't even go to vote to the church. He just announced it by his authority. And the rules changed. I want to make this very clear. I am not a hater. I love everybody. That homosexual, oh yeah, I love them. That drunk, that alcoholic. That lost man, Lord, I don't care how nasty you are. I want you to know I love you. But I want to tell you something. I'm the shepherd of this church. And this is my flock. And there are places that the lost man belongs. The lost man is welcome at this church. I wish every drunk in Columbus County, every alcoholic, Every LGBTQ or whatever would come here and sit down, but I want to tell you something. You belong out here in these pews until you get right with God. If you ain't right with God, you ain't got no business at the piano. You ain't got no business in the choir. You ain't got no business in the women's group. You ain't got no business in the men's group. And you show up. ain't got no business teaching a class, and you will not be behind this pulpit. But when you get saved. Join the choir. Preacher, that don't happen. Y'all don't know. Boy, a couple months ago, I had wood track me down. Got right up on my grill. Yeah. Said, I will be to your church and I will do such and such and I will go in that church and I will sing a song and when they got through I weren't mean I just let them know you might sing somewhere but it won't be at that church now you're welcome to sit and hear the word but till you get right with God you will not be in a choir you will not be standing to sing a song but they want them to know why brother Doug if you lost and I'm lost. lost. There ain't no way I could come to you and lead you anywhere other than hell itself. But if you lost, you all the way there anyhow. But a lost man can't lead a saved man. A lost man can't lead nobody to the Lord. But those that know the Lord can sing about the Lord. And how can you sing about the blood if you don't know about the blood? How can you sing about Calvary if you don't know about Calvary? How can you sing about being redeemed if you don't know even the angels can't even the angels can't sing about being redeemed. Amen. But it's the job of the preacher yes, to keep order with God's word. Yes, it and it's turned into a business. Oh, you take the money out of the pastor's wallet. Roy, don't record that. Huh? <laughs> record it. Put it on eBay and NBC. Send it out there. You take the money away, and you'll, you'll run a lot of people off these days. 
and you get cliques and groups and families. Don't preach that subject around here. You'll make so and so mad. I've heard folks say you need to back off preaching hell. But I'm going to tell you something. If you don't like me preaching on hell, it's got to be because you're on the way there. Anybody want to amen me in this church? Because let me tell you, there was a time in my life, Brother Linwood, I was actually on the way to hell. And I did not like that preacher. I hear finger look that long. Everywhere I went, I'd hear him every sudden, you on the way to hell. Lord, you're going to hell. I know I heard you last week. You're going to hell. Every Sunday of my life, you're going to hell. You're going to hell. And I would lay in my bed at night. And I'd hear the preacher's voice. And I knew if I died before I got out to bed in the morning, that I'd go to hell. And I didn't like to hear preaching about hell. And Brother Barry, something strange happened one day. I actually got saved. And the Lord forgave me. And buddy, the next time I went to church and that preacher got to preaching about hell, uh, fire it up, preacher. You tell it, preacher. Preach about hell. But wait a minute. You didn't have last week. I was on the way there. But this week, uh, I've been redeemed. And uh, if there's anything in that word that rubs you the wrong way, it's because it's hit you where it needs to hit you. If I preach on a poison tongue or folk with loose lips talking too much and you don't like it there's a good reason your, ten, your lips is too loose if I preach you too lazy to read and study at home and you don't like it there's a good chance you're too lazy to study and read at home if I preach to forsake not to assemble yourselves together and you don't like it, there's a good chance you lay around the house on Sunday and don't even go to church in the house. God's Word is designed to hit you where it hurts. But God don't hurt you to run you off. God will whip you to make you right. Uh, Daddy evidently liked whipping me. I'm telling you, half of it, he didn't know a lot of stuff, but anyhow, he caught me on some of it. Oh, yeah. And he'd always tell me that crazy stuff. Now, y'all know what I'm talking about. Okay. I, every once in a while, especially when I got bigger, my last one, I was 16, by the way. Uh -huh. But anyhow, uh, he'd say, son, I want you to know this hurts me. And then he told me the craziest thing I ever heard. He said it actually hurts him more than it hurts me. And I'm standing there with whelps on both sides. I lay in the bed and I can feel them under the sheets. And that man wanted to tell me that I'm supposed to believe that it hurt him more than it hurt me. And I lived my whole life not believing that until the day came. <sighs> Hello, somebody. Until the day that I had to take one of mine and let me tell you it was a hurt like I had ever felt in my life. God don't whip you because he's mad at you. He whips you because he loves you and he whips you with the word of God. And when you hear a preacher preach the truth, you ought to be thankful and not resentful. How shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? Nothing wrong with going to get an education. But if the only reason you're preaching the Bible is because you got a college degree, you need to sit down. If you ain't called by God, how in the world can you do it? Amen. Except they be sent. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. That doesn't mean preachers has got pretty feet. Let me tell you where that comes from in Isaiah 52, 7. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings. 
that publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publisheth salvation, that saith in design that God reigneth. Israel was in captivity. They were in bondage. But Isaiah said, look, a messenger's coming. And that messenger is going to preach salvation. And he's going to preach freedom. And every time they'd see one of them messengers coming, the people would get so happy. And they'd hear that man of God coming through the hills and coming through the valley saying he's on the way. Deliverance is on the way. Freedom is on the way. And church, I know you find hard times. I know things get hard in your life and you have burdens, but ain't it a blessing to go to God's house and hear God's word remind you that we win. We got the victory in the Lord and hear the good news of the gospel. You won't hear it on Fox and CNN. You got to get the good news out of the Bible. Now listen to 1 Corinthians 1.21. Now this will make you laugh. It will. For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them Boy, I look like a fool to a lot of people tonight. Sweat dripping off my nose. Spit flying. Gail cleans everything on the front of this church, every service. Pants soaking wet. Yelling. Pointing fingers. But let me tell you something. It was God's design for preaching to be the method to deliver the word of the Lord. It is foolishness to the world to hear about a cross and hear about a Savior and hear about redemption and hear about a straight and narrow way. John is foolish to a world what we're doing here tonight on Sunday evening. But when you get saved by the grace of God, church, it makes sense to... Can I get a witness of anybody? Boy, you thought church was a waste of time. And you weren't going out yonder and then God saved you. And it all made sense to you. Lord, have mercy. I'm not soliciting you, but I'm telling you, get your family under Bible preaching somewhere. Somebody that don't preach because they paid. They preach because they called. Church, I love you and these children. I will not be satisfied till I see every one of them walk the aisle in this church and give their heart to the Lord. But I don't want to stand before the Lord one day and give an account for you because I didn't tell you the truth. I actually want to be in heaven with you and we can all just celebrate. Yeah, you're a Christian are the only people that can look at a stranger and find out that it's a brother in the Lord and say, I tell you what, I'll see you later. I don't know when. It might be 10 years from now. It might be tomorrow. It might be a hub. But one of these days, I'll see you later in a place called glory because our Lord and Savior made a way and is coming back for you and I and his church one of these days. If you serve Muhammad, you ain't going. You serve Buddha, you ain't going preach to preach, you're going to offend somebody. Well, I'd rather you be offended and then get saved than pat you on the back you find out that Buddha's dead. Whew. Romans 10, 17. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. We all have different beliefs and stuff, don't we? I work with a man. We live in the same community. He would not touch a piece of hog meat. Now, I'm not putting him down. I'm just telling you. He wouldn't need a pork chop. Wouldn't need a ham hock. A backbone, neck bone. I didn't know that. We spent every day talking about the Lord and Calvin 
and the blood. Every day we worked together. All we talked about was the Lord. One day, a long time into being together with that man, I brought out two pork chop sandwiches. I said, ma'am, eat one of these up. Would you like to have one? And I didn't know it. And he said, look, he, he said, for me, I don't eat. I said, hey, buddy, I didn't know. That's quite all right. I walked around the corner, and I ate my pork chop, and I ate his. <laughs> uh, hello, somebody. But I want to tell you, when I got through eating, we got back together, and we got to talking about Jesus again. I might have lost somebody, so let me help you out on this. I want you to know people do have different beliefs on other stuff. And it's all right. If you've got something that convicts you, you believe in, you stick to your gun. But I want to tell you, pork chop won't save you or condemn you. Uh, the length of your sleeves won't... Ah, Lord, I'm, but let me tell you what will save you. The blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Calvary, redemption, being washed. Hey, only Jesus can say, you live by your beliefs, but you better preach the gospel. Amen. Where you mess folk up was when you get behind that wood desk and you begin to preach what? How you feel. That's almost old fashioned. Romans 12, 18. Romans 12, verse 18. Listen to this and I'll move on. It's been good to be in church tonight. Romans 12, verse 18. If it be possible as much as liveth in you, Lord have mercy, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. i got to get real with you now. We got any men in here with egos? How about any women? Any, Y'all might be worse than the men. How do you feel when folk get the best of you? Do your own? Purposely? Boy, as people, we got tender spots, don't we? We like to give what we get. Somebody tell you off, you're going to tell them off better. Somebody do you wrong, you're going to do them wrong better. But I want you to listen to what the Lord said in verse 20 of Romans 12. You, you, better, you better pray before you jump on this verse. Therefore, if thy enemy be hung, uh, hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. You'll never overcome wrong by giving a wrong back. You'll never overdo something that's getting the best of you by trying to retaliate. But if you'll give God to it, God will overcome it for you. But you're right, Brother Doug, it's hard. It's hard. Yes, the Lord did call me. I ran for him for a year. I told him there wasn't no way, there wasn't no way. He's wasting his time. Might as well go get somebody else. But about a year later, after a little persuasion, I accepted that call. And I remember the day I felt my head hit something. I felt something flow inside that I had never felt before. And yes, even be a preacher, I remember several months back, there was a fellow. I know the devil said, boy, everywhere I look, there he was. Antagonizing, I'm telling you, you name it, he was doing it, you name it, he was doing it, and you name it, he was doing it. I knew he was trying to get the best of me, and I'd sit there, and I wouldn't say nothing, and I wouldn't say it months after months went by. But I want to tell you one day, don't feel bad at me now unless you want to. I, uh, I'm, I'm a man I, I, 
that particular day, buddy, when he was just a yapping in the jaw and I had a thought run through my mind. I remember the thought ran through my mind, I believe I can make you hush. Oh, that thought ran through my mind. The preacher showed up. Wait a minute, you said, you know, I said I was a preacher. I didn't say I was the preacher. But when I had that thought ran through my mind and I actually entertained it, the Holy Ghost got to work it on me and he started at the bottom and he went to the top and I ended up walking away from that man. I looked like I had been in a fight and he ain't touched me. But the Holy Ghost tore me up from head to toe and all he wanted to know was who was I to get upset because somebody gave me a hard time. Pray for them. Y'all know what else was laid on my heart? And you better mean it. I promise you. I stuck my foot. I try to tell y'all, put salt on your feet in the morning before you leave the house. Especially if you're one of them that's got a habit. So you're going to stick your foot in it. You might as well learn to like crow because you're going to eat it. And I, right there, from the depths of my heart, pray God Almighty bless that man. And I meant it. Never again another second. And me and that man crossed paths. Never had another ill thought to him because God God vengeance belongs to the Lord church I know it gets us mad and we want to retaliate sometimes with things going on we want to straighten people out I know it but I want to remind you God's going to do the straightening out one day and I want to close right here this evening and tell you this Romans 14, 11, and 12. We won't get to the rest of it. Romans 14, 11, and 12. Will you listen to this? For it is written. Can't change it. For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, Every knee shall bow to me. And every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. It is not an accident that you're in New Life Church tonight. God wheeled your way here and he directed your path so that you can hear this right here. Every blessing that you have in your life was gave to you by God Almighty. You see them two little children? I ain't got to tell y'all, y'all know it. It was gave to you by God. But I wouldn't be worth the nickel tonight if I didn't tell you. One day you're going to meet him. Brother Corey, sister, you're going to give an account of what you've done with what God gave you. That young man right there, he was gay as a gift. Brother Mitchell, he was gay to you. Sister Pan, he was gay to you. What all has God gave you in your life? Anybody in here been blessed? How full is your refrigerator at home? Am I talking to anybody? Are you one of them that open the refrigerator and after you move the milk and you move the orange juice and you move the Pepsi and you move the Kool-Aid and you move, you know, shut the door and say you ain't got nothing to eat in the house? Huh? Are you one of them that open the cabinet and after you move the Fritos and you move the Cheetos and you move the Doritos and you move the four corner now, you'll slam the cabinet door and say you ain't got nothing to eat? 
Or you want a deal that God bless you with a job, but you complain because you got to get up early to get there, my token. You will. You will meet God Almighty one day and we all will give an account for what we have done with what He gave us because it's our duty to take what He gives us and use it for His glory. Did God give you a loving spouse? Did He give you a child? Did He give you a job? Did He give you feet that work? If you knew the new life, I hope this will be worldwide one day. When you begin to think you something, move your pinky and be reminded without God you can't even do that. That's why I like to meet people at church out in Walmart or the road or on the job. It don't matter if I can't. If they can't hear me, I'll just get my hand up. They'll know what I'm talking about. But the Lord has gave us what he gave us. To use it for his glory. Has he gave us the church? Now I want to ask you tonight in a closing thought and I want to ask you to stand. If deceived, I don't even know what time it is. But if you was to meet the Lord in the next few minutes, I want to know, would he look at you for the things that he's gave you and would he say, you know what? I want to tell you a good job. You've honored my name and you've done well with what I gave you. For church, would there be some things in your life and if you was to be honest tonight, you have not used to give God glory. I invite you to come this evening if the Lord spoke into your heart. Spend a little time.